Hey, Jamardi signing in. Hey, my program is welcome to part 11 of the Python and Pygame 2 Python tutorial series. So, we're going to be running a bit longer with these tutorials because we've gotten a bit more into Python code and we're a bit more advanced, so we can go a bit longer with these tutorials. Here's the code where I left it. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the main function. So, in the main function, and anywhere in the function that's not inside a for loop or a while loop, that's going to work just fine. And we're going to create some Boolean. So, basically, the plan for this tutorial is we're going to get the player to actually be moving. So, it's some exciting stuff. So let's create some booleans. And to create a boolean, you don't have to declare any data types or stuff like that. All you have to do is just say the boolean you want to create. So we're going to start with the control boolean. So up key is going to be set equal to down key. And that is also going to be set equal to the right key, which is also going to be set to key equal to the left key. And all that is finally going to be set equal to false initially. So initially, not going to be with capital F false and because initially you're not going to be pressing any keys so that looks all good day eh? so now we're going to scroll down and since we've created these bullets we need to be addressing these bullets so setting them to false or true depending if you is you getting any input so in the while game running loop is for event and pi game event dot get we're going to be asking for another type of event so basically this for loop asks for an event this specifies an event so this is the event of quitting so let's click in that and then x button and now we're going to specify it for event so event dot type and this event is going to be a key press so if event dot type is equal to and a key press and pi game is just key down so key down and all capitals so key down add a colon so if you press any key now we're going to do a nested if statement and basically an if statement is just an if statement and an if statement so then if the event dot key, so if he's pressing a key and then the key is equal to, so we're going to start with the key up. So in the Python with pi game, it's just key and then underscore and then up. So add a colon. And then if he's pressing the up key, we're going to set the up key, the boolean equal to true. So there we go. And now we can copy and paste this. So select this much, control C, and let's just paste that for the rest of the four or rest of the three booleans and change this to down so down all capitals again and change this to down as well down and change this to right right and make sure it is all capitals because pygame just decided to go all capitals it's just their naming system which works perfectly fine right and finally left that's going to be the last one so left not left Led. There we go. Left and left. So now we're. This is all going to be setting to true if you are pressing them. But now we're going to have to set them to false if you're not going to be pressing them. So then we're going to detab out of all this. So just backspace out of that. And then we're going to create another. Ask for another type of event, which is the event that you're not pressing a key. So if event dot type is equal to. Oops. Gotta make sure spacing is all right. Is equal to a key up. Add a colon. So, and then we're going to specify for which key if a certain key is up so if the event dot key actually we can just copy all this Control c copy and pasting is a huge time saver that's for sure and instead of setting all these to true just set all these to false so false false for that finally one more false and almost done and it should be working all good to go so now we're gathering all this data but this data isn't really doing anything at all it's not affecting anything so now i want it to affect something so we are going to want to scroll down and go into the while we already are in the while loop actually so in here after the camera updates we're going to want the player to update so we'll just go player player and then obj because it's the object not the class and we say obj so that we can specify it's class a eh? not the class i mean the object so dot update and the dot operator basically says is accessing something inside the player object class or object and then open up some parameters. And parameters we're going to give it for right now is just up key and then add a comma and then down key. And again, if we're going to use spaces in between, you should do that all the time. This way it all looks pretty consistent. Right key and left key. Finally, there we go. Left key. So good to go. So now this is all updating. So we are giving the player object the update function some arguments. But we haven't told it necessarily that it's expecting stuff. So it's like, hey, we're giving it a gift whether you like it or not. But it's not going to like that. So we're going to have to tell it once the gift. So copy that, those parameters, and just the inside parameters, just those values. 
and we scroll down to the player class and inside update I did in addition to self paste all those goodness in there so this way it's expecting a gift and it's going to get a gift which is going to be the information which is going to be balloons and now we can take out the pass because basically what the pass keyword does it says ignore all this whole function it's not really doing anything it's just there for later use so take that out the first thing we're going to test for is we're going to test if a key is pressed so if the up key i mean not the key pressed if a value is true so if up key so if the up key is pressed what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set that x velocity the y velocity i should say equal to a negative number and the reason we do that is because the way the x and y axis is is just like in school x is left to right and then y is up and down so the further you go down the greater the number increases so we're going to want to decrease if he's jumping into the air so we can pull that demonstration out of the way so we're just going to set go self dot and then x val and we are going to subtract from it so minus equals to quickly subtract and we'll start with five that'll work for now and now we're going to do test for if left or right so if a right key add a colon so if the right key is being pressed we're going to want to gain some x velocity because he's going to be scooting to the right and that's going to be gaining him some more more x position so f self dot x val and we're going to add to this and the shortcut to add is just plus equals and then we'll start with five that seems like a good number and we're going to do the same thing for left Let's scroll down a little there we go easier to read so if left key and add a colon and then what is going to happen if we press the left key it's just basically the opposite of the right key so self dot x val and then negative equals five there we go and now all this is not really doing anything because the x velocity and the y velocity they're not attached to anything it's not changing the x position but we do want it to do that so we're going to go self dot rect so to get to get the rectangle to update so self dot rect and then dot left so the left side of it we're going to want to add x to that so just plus and then equals x plus uh, no, not x x velocity so self dot x velocity self dot x val which is what we abbreviated then we want to do the same thing for the top of the square and the y velocity so self dot rec dot top and self dot y velocity so if we check and run it with f5 that's the shortcut in idle anyways so we're at check and run it and let's take a look so move to the right yep works move to the left I mean whoops I got that backwards and move up does that work uh, no it's moving to the left uh what the heck uh let's take a look so uh f up self dot x velocity no x velocity is left to right we want to change that to a y velocity so y fell so control save and let's hit f5 and check it again let's see okay and that seems to be working a lot better and again we can't press the down key the down key is not doing anything yet and that is because that's going to be constantly con not constipated it's going to be constant constipated let's just say compromise it's going to be compromised by gravity so now we have a square moving across the screen but as you probably noticed you probably saw that it's like as if we're drawing a picture here so uh, i mean sure it looks cool and everything but we don't necessarily want that for a 2d platform so to fix that what we're going to do is we're going to scroll up into the main function and keep on scrolling until you get out of the wild game learning loop so once you get out of that you can pop it anywhere really and what we're going to do is we're going to create a background so the background is just going to be a color for now so we're just going to call this background so background i always have a trouble pressing the g button and i think that's because it's kind of halfway between your left and right finger so it can never my brain never really tells me which finger i should be using so kind of get well kind of design flaw for there for the keyboard but it works it works so that it's going to be equal to a pi game dot surface so it's going to be a surface with a color on it so surface open and close some parameters the parameters we're going to give it is just how big it is going to be so we're going to set this to be as big as our screen is so that's good was um win width i think it was when or let's just quickly check let's take a look yeah win height and win width so width first because x and y x goes first and then y i don't know why but it's just the way it works for everything actually so win width and then win height there we go so then that was creating but then we want to convert it so then we go just go a back group why did i call it back group that should be background there we go that's better and then now that we've converted it now we want to fill it with the color so then we can just call it again with background 
and then yep background dot fill open up some colors parameters and then inside here where we want to access the color so color and then we want to give it some more parameters and now we want to give it the parameter the color parameter so open up some quotations and here we're going to use an html hexadecimal system so to figure out what a nice hexadecimal color is is you can google it that's pretty easy or if you install paint.net so i have paint.net here or gimp i'm pretty sure that the same thing goes for gimp and then inside paint.net you're going to want to make sure you have that color wheel selected again if you want to install paint.net if you don't have it installed already there's links in the description to a video on that and make sure you have the color wheel selected so non-selected selected and then just go over to the color wheel and you'll see this thing called more and then it's going to give you a hex so that's that number right there so we're going to set this up to let's go with a nice good looking blue and then you can just copy that hexadecimal Control c zoom out and then you can close out of paint on net and nope don't save any of that now we can paste that in there and that's going to be an awesome looking blue and be sure there's a hashtag before that because otherwise I'm not sure if it works without it, but I'm pretty sure you need that hashtag in there. And now it's just created a background. See so how we want to use that background. So we're going to scroll down into the while game running loop. So right here, we're going to want to, before the player updates, we're going to want to fill the screen. So well, all we have to do is just type the name of our background, which is background, and then ground, dot, and then blit. So blit is the Python word. No, not python pygame word to pop something on the screen i just spat over my screen that's not a good idea but we can set that just split it to zero at zero so if we hit f5 to run in it hopefully no errors and yeah we do have an error so i just need to be an integer with integer height so it's saying that it needs to be an integer so let's scroll up and uh yep let's see we really need to have it double parentheses i have no idea why that's don't know why you need double parentheses but we're telling the background that it's trying to draw something but the background can't draw anything we need the screen to draw something so let's just type screen and we want the screen to blit the background that's the way it should go not the background blitting the screen it doesn't seem to work the other way around so background and then open up some parameters and make sure you close that with open and close correctly and i think the final error we have the figure final error is it's not a pie game dot surface just a surface and last but not least, the poor comma was feeling all left out here that we didn't include him in our errors. So, of course, we need a comma there. So, so now for the final F5 button. And yes, it is working. No errors at all. So, we can move to the left. We can move to the right. And now it's not having a giant tail. If we wanted a tail, that would be great. But, I don't know. We will see where the game takes us. But, for now, we don't want a tail. We want it to look just like this. So, all good now we can close out of this and now let's just, just take a quick moment to clean up the code so let's take out this comma line don't need to be filling it there take that out and leave a space here why not and then scroll up and what else can we do so scroll up here and let's take care of a bunch of these colors we ended up not actually needing them so we can take that out and now that's about all that we needed to do to clean up our code and now we have clean professional looking code so in the next tutorial we're going to be getting it so that the platforms are displaying and then maybe we'll get around to colliding with platforms possibly but if you guys have any questions or comments leave that down in the comments section if you guys enjoyed this video leave a like and i'll be seeing you in the next video it's your marty out